Welcome back students, this is the professor and this is episode 3 of our series of creating an online banking website using Flask. And in this episode, we'll be learning how to create our user registration system. And since we're not using an SQL, we'll be adapting a different technique of saving our user's information. So to get started, let's go to our main.py file and under app, let's just create a dictionary. So I'm going to name it users. And since this is a dictionary, I'll just give it some curly braces. And to make it easier for me, I'll just print the users to see if there's any existing users inside our system. Now let's get started with creating a form using Bootstrap. So we'll just go to getbootstrap.com, go to the docs, and if we go to the search bar, you just need to type in forms. Like so. And if you scroll down a bit, you can read the overview if you want to. I'm just going to copy the first form, which is right here. It looks pretty nice, so I'll be going with it. Now, since this is a registration area, I'll go to my registration HTML, which is right here. And inside the block content, I'll just paste the HTML code. And so if you go and open our website in the new tab, I'll just give it a run. All right, if I open and reload it again, if I go to the registration page, you can see that there's a form. But there's a problem right now. We can see that the whole row is spread out towards the whole page and I want to contain it within a container. So that's what we're gonna do. I'll go back to my code editor and inside the form, or should I say outside the form, I'll create a div class and inside the class, I'll just give it a container property just like so and every time we open the div we need to close it so I'll just close the div like this and I'll just give this an indentation for the form since it's much easier for me to look at and just an easier way of decoding or debugging my code so we'll just give this a run and it looks really nice now since it's compressed a bit instead of just being spread out so I'll just clean this code up much better since I don't want the check me out box or the we'll never share your email. I don't want any of that. So I'll just clean the code up and I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, now that I've completed and get rid of the excess random bits, I'll just go back to my code editor and between the text right over here, I'll just give it a BR tag just to separate the text from the form and I'll also give it an each R tag just like that so now that we've done this we actually need to handle the data and to do that first of all we need to go back to our main.py and inside the register function this is where we have to do a bit of complicated coding but it's, it's just easy just follow what I do and hopefully you'll face no problems so first of all we need to import another function called request now this request function basically receives the data from the form so if I go to my register function first of all I need to create a method now this method is going to evaluate whether the user used a, a get post or a, a post method. Now a post method secures the data that is being transmitted from the client to the server. So first of all, I need to put a comma right next to the register URL and type in methods. And then it needs to be a list. And inside the list, we need to give it the two parameters, which is get and post, just like that. And inside the register function, we need to type the exact code which I'm typing right now because this is really important. So I'm going to say if request dot method equals post, make sure they all are capital. Then I will um, get the username, which is equal to request dot form and I'm going to receive the username. Now as you can see, I've 
and booted earlier which is request and uh, I know you guys are confusing where I get a username for that's what I'll be doing right now so if you could really navigate yourself to the register.html and inside the first piece of um, form where it says email address just delete all of that and type in username like that and inside type just type in text because that's what we need and we'll also give it a name which will be username which is exactly what I've typed in over here before and now since we're already editing our HTML let's do the same thing for the password as well now we already got the password over here the type will be text as well and the name will be password just don't over complicate things so this is it for the HTML actually if you go back to the form tag over here we need to type in another thing which is the action so which which function do we need the action to be formed on and that will be the register function so I'm going to say slash register and we also need to handle the post method which sends the data from the client to the server so I'm going to say method is equal to post now this can be lowcase as well so now that we've handled this we need to go back to our main.py and this is where we're going to manage what happens to the data that we've collected so as you can see this is the username so when i say request or form username it actually grabs the whatever content there is inside the form over here which is the username and it stores in inside the username variable and the next thing we're going to do is create an if function and this if function is going to decide whether the username exists or not so if it exists we don't need to create another user with the same username so we're going to be handling that so you just need to type in if username in users so if the username already exists within the users database which you created then we say print user already exists just like so and then we return the rendered template which is this now if the username is different and it doesn't exist within our database system we say else and then we create a password variable since we already verified that the username does not exist and this will also be the same thing which is request dot form and we're going to use the name which is password just like so and then to associate the password with the username we then type in users which is the dictionary put the brackets username which is the username that the user has picked himself or herself and then I'll be saying equals password and then after that we print user created let me just exit this and say print user created just like so and now since we handle that and associated that password to the user I'm then going to print the user's dictionary just to verify whether the user has been created or not and then we return the index.html so it's going to navigate the user to the home page so I'm going to say return render template and I'm just going to return the home page dot HTML just like that and now we handle the post information and what about the get information so the method get is when the user just goes onto the website that's what they will see at first so now that we handle the post method we now need to handle the get method so I'm going to say else return render template and I'm just going to return the home page or should I say the register.html page just like that so we'll give this a run and we'll see if our code is successful or not so this is a website this is the home page 
So now I'm navigating myself towards the register page since I'm a new user. Just press register. For my username, it will be prof programmer. Don't forget to subscribe as well. And if I go to the password, the password will be 123. Actually, let me just change the username to prof since it's much easier to write like that. We then submit actually first of all let's go back to our code editor and if you scroll up you can see the empty dictionary that's because we printed the dictionary just to see that there's no user existing at the moment so we'll go back to our website we'll submit the data and it redirected us to the home page so that's a good sign so now we'll go back to the code editor and as you can see user created the username is prof and the password is one two three as you can see, we successfully created a registration form, we successfully handled the data and saved it to our database system. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next lesson.